Cowboys former defensive line dominator Tony Casillas. Good morning, sir. Hey, good morning, fellas. I'm sure you guys are enjoying this more than you would be if you're down in Tampa uh, doing this virtual rodeo, radio row. But uh, hey, regardless, man, it's uh, crazy how you look from one year to the other, and it's amazing how the dynamics change the Super Bowl. But yeah, hey, thanks for having me as always, brother. So I, I, I want to know, because like this is something we've always been curious about, and I know it's been a minute for the Cowboys, but <laughs> that was polite. No, it's been a long-ass time. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 you don't have to – hey, look, I am old. Whenever you start talking about it, so no, don't sugarcoat it. It's been ancient times. All right. It has been an entire <laughs> generation now since the Cowboys <laughs> rolled up to the Super Bowl, but you were part of the last dynasty of the Cowboys. What is that feeling, not just after you win the NFC Championship game, but what is the feeling when it is Super Bowl week or you are closing in on the game? I get it. Everyone's like, treat it like another game, all this and that. Does that actually work, and how do you feel? Uh, that doesn't apply. I think that that's just uh, kind of a cliche that we kind of use as players and coaches, but it's not another game. Uh, there is there is so much that goes into this game, and uh, it's, it's almost you have to, like, touch it and see it and feel it to really experience it. And quite honestly, you know, I, I, I you know, joke about it, but still, you know, I reminisce this week about those memories. I mean, that's, that's your part of history. But the game itself, it, it is just uh, – it's hard to explain. It's kind of like a out of body experience, something that you really like. You're, it's like I don't know if you're Harry Potter. I, I, it's just hard to. You're, you're, Harry Potter you're is that what you're about I to say? I love where he's going oh, no, with this. No, no, I don't. I don't even. I don't even know where that came from. You know how I, I can go <laughs> in different directions, but it's just you go into the, like this never never land where you, you don't experience these type of uh, the emotional feelings in 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 the venue and. I, I think the week, the two weeks prior is the best part of it because you get to experience all the hype and the media. and every, I mean, the way it is now, you know, with the social media, I mean, it just, I couldn't even imagine it. But uh, I, I think it's the best way to do it is the focus is on you. There's, you know, I, I think that you as an athlete, there's, uh, you know, you're, you, there's a self-centered amount of when it comes to, you know, you know when, it, when it comes to the focus and everything. And there is nothing, the experience of coming out in just the whole two weeks of the hype, the media, and answering all these questions. And the focus, I mean, it's just, you know, people ask that question all the time, and I wish there was an easy answer, but it's to be able to live in experience, you cannot apply that. It's not another game. It, it, it really, it's really not. So, Tony, I want to know, being obviously a huge Cowboy fan, especially back in the 90s, was it a different feeling when you guys went to Atlanta for the Super Bowl? Uh, go, you know, Kansas City's doing that. And then also, I mean, you guys were flat in the first half of the second Super Bowl, then played a tremendous second half. So can you talk about, was there any different nerves or different feelings going back to back? Well, Mike, I don't think – I think once you get to one and you, you, you know, like Kansas City, as you mentioned, on the back to back, uh, it, it it really if you're if you're built to do those types of things in which we were I think there's a lot of parallels when you look at Kansas City and our team and we we had a coach that you know that week in in Atlanta I mean we on Monday Tuesday and Wednesday we we're in full pads and Jimmy just really just beat that drum and really just just didn't let you you know rest or just feel comfortable about what you accomplish and. You know, I think when you – the first half of playing Buffalo again, I think maybe the novelty wore off just a little bit because of the first year, the first time we beat them, we beat them really bad in Pasadena. Uh, and then there's some distractions in Atlanta. I think that that's the thing about it, is that you have to experience everything around you. You know, whether it's during the week, whether it's – you know, there's, there's so many damn distractions, Mike. And, you know, it, it, it's, it's hard to just really just focus on just, you know, what you're there for at times. But once we got past that in the second half, I think we just got back because you remember, I mean, I don't know if the first half was not good for Troy. I mean, he, he struggled. And in the second half, we started pounding the rock. And then, you know, Emmett M, 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 M ended up getting the, the MVP in that game. So, you know, I think that it just comes with just experience. And really just after a while, you're like, okay, let's settle down. Let's, let's catch up breath. And then let's get back to what we do. And then, the better team always wins. It really does when it comes down to it. And, you know, we had 
you know, Jimmy was such a, you know, pay attention to detail guy. Just really wouldn't let you just relax. And uh, at halftime, you're talking about getting your ass chewed out. I mean, that's, uh, you know, we, we responded to that and he demanded that. So, yeah, I think the whole, you have to experience it. You can't pretend that you're not there for a once in a lifetime experience. I mean, you know, look, even someone like Tom Brady has been to 10 Super Bowls. I mean, that's crazy. I mean, you st- you never get over that because of what it represents. Maybe this year's different because it's pandemic Super Bowl, but still the rings don't change, the trophies don't change. You still get that, and you want to be remembered as a champion. You want to be able to have those those things uh, and be part of history. Tony Casilla, Super Bowl champion, join us here on the KNC Masterpiece on 105.3 The Fan on Radio Row. And I, I guess, Tony, like that team, that your group was known for – uh, I mean, there was a lot of glitz and glamour. There was a lot of partying going on during that time. Yeah. Were you guys just more conditioned for the the circumstances because y'all partied all the time, so that one week wasn't going to be that big of a deal for you? Well, I think we were smart. I think, you know, look, there's some guys that can, can compartmentalize it, and there's some guys that can't. Uh, you know, we were just – that was part of our whole DNA on that team, the characters. I mean, you had different guys that went out and partied, and they showed up the next day, and – they were able to perform, and that's life. I mean, there's a lot of people that can do that, and just so happened. I mean, we, you know, that's what made our team so unique. We had different type of personalities, and we, we all, you know, when you showed up at work, you, you, you better get your job done, or then you're going to be called out. So I think we were able to do that, and that was just part of the rock star Cowboys in the '90s. And you know, it's just so funny. You know, I listen to different guys on. on talk shows, especially Troy, and, and, and you, you look at the guys today, the modern-day Cowboys, they're, they're, li- they're, they're living like rock stars, and yet they haven't really done anything to deserve that type of celebrity. I mean, we earned it, and we took advantage of it, which is good. You're supposed to, because you look back, you know, 25 years later, and you're still, you're, you're still talking about the Cowboys not winning the Super Bowl. So we were able to compartmentalize that. We knew we went out. We enjoyed it. Uh, I mean, we went out the first Super Bowl. We went to L.A. I mean, that was that was a blast, boys. I mean, I cannot tell you how much fun we had. I bet. Uh, I cannot tell you how much partying we did. Uh, <laughs> but it didn't show up on Sunday, did it? Because we beat <laughs> Buffalo's ass, man. It was it was a uh, it was an assault on them. <laughs> did you feel bad at all for Buffalo in that next Super Bowl? Because now they lost four in a row, and you're like, those poor guys. No. <laughs> no, I, I, you know, I I I feel sorry for you. well. You know, you look at Buffalo now, they're back in the, you know, they were, they were, they were in the AFC Championship game, and, and yet Dallas has struggled to get there. But, I, I, you know, I, I never feel sorry for another opponent or someone you're faced against. Look, I mean, that's what you're there to do. And, look, I mean, they, they got there. Um, they just could never close a deal. And, you know, I, when I see those guys, I see Thurman and, I, uh, you know, Bruce Smith and you know, guys we played, uh, you know, I, I'm sure that it's something – it's an accomplishment that they just fell short. Uh, you know, it's an accomplishment they couldn't get over. And I'm sure those guys have to live with that every day. But, hey, we're all out there trying to, to gain the same thing. And if you're you're not <laughs> on point that day, then, look, I mean, no, you should never feel, feel sorry for anyone when it comes to professional sports or any type of business. I mean, it's a, you know, you're, you know, you're very, uh, you're complimentary and, and you're, you know, you show gamesmanship, but, when it comes to beating someone, I mean, that's what you live for, man. That's why you're an athlete. When you walked off the field that day, I, I know probably more thoughts of celebration and everything, but you had just seen Buffalo for the second straight year. I know your career would take in a different direction. The franchises would go in different directions. But did you just feel like, well, maybe we'll just see them again next year? Or did any such <laughs> thoughts like that occur? You know what? You really never think about that. I think it's so hard to, to get back. I mean, it's hard to get to one. I think, again, as you, as you look at Tom Brady and what he's done and just to be able to get back and get in postseason play, I mean, people don't really understand. You know what? The, if you can get first the first three, eight, the first, get through the first eight games and have some consistency and really just kind of ramp everything up and get December, that's when you really tell about who you are and – you know, I, you don't ever think about that because you don't know if you're ever going to get back. I mean, there's a lot of things that have to happen. I mean, it's uh, sometimes I'd rather be lucky than good because you got to be lucky as far as injuries. There's guys, you know, certain things got to happen. Guys get injured. You have guys come in, and if they're able to, you know, 
pick up or and really just kind of make it, you know, make a contribution and really not to be a you know let down and, and and able to you know compensate for or complement the play, um, then you'll you'll take that. But yeah, I mean, it's you don't even think about. It. We never thought about that. Mm. We knew what we needed to do. Uh, the, th- the thing about the teams, and you look at the teams of the '90s, especially the first one. I don't really, re- I don't think we realized how great we were until we went out to San Francisco, and that's when we decided, hey, look, you know, we still we're just like you know, some young kid, you know, you just don't, you know, you're you don't know what you have, and you know, you just, you know, you you're so talented, and you're just kind of green, and then you know, you're you're just kind of finding your way, and then all of a sudden everything just kind of clicks, and you're like, wow. We're pretty damn good, but we never sat around and talked about how great we were. Well, you know, Tony, we didn't have to do that. I have this one question for you because you intrigued me because I believe that the Cowboys do have that kind of thing that Jimmy Johnson talks about. You just said it. Des Bryant recently talked about kind of the the uh, I don't know what it is like winning is secondary right now for the Cowboys because you're so popular and you don't have to win to be popular. How does that change? Is that all Jerry? Is that uh, new guys coming in going, this isn't acceptable? How do you change the culture of the Cowboys, which you believe, Des Bryant believes, Jimmy Johnson believes, I believe, has to change if they ever want to put a winning, consistent winning product back on the field? You know, and that's a great question, Mike, because there's this, there's, uh, I think there's this part of maybe there's some entitlement because of how big that brand is. And if you go out to the star and you look how, I mean, that's just an unbelievable facility. I mean, it's a remarkable. And, you know, they had that in the 90s, but, you know, you, you talk about the generation before that. But, you know what, I, I think that, you know, that's how it's celebrated. You, you know, now it's, it's, you know, you look at the Dallas Cowboys brand. You know, I do a, I do a podcast on blogging the boys, and there's like three, four million people that hit that website. And you, you guys are the, the flagships. They, so you know how big the brand is. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. if you're a cowboy, a player, your whole your your whole incentive is to be a brand yourself as a player, and you're living off what Jerry, what he's done over the last 25 years. So I think sometimes that's secondary because you're still celebrated like you've done something, and actually you haven't. And to me, that should be the first thing that comes before the car. You know, it should be what are we going to do to win. You know, we're going to get paid because the money, I mean, that's just the way the game is, okay? But it's the Cowboys brand. I think there's a lot of resentment for that. And for me, this year, you know, even my role as being on that franchise, I mean, I've, I've been able to parlay and, you know, here I am to do some things because I was on those great teams and we were able to accomplish something. But to watch them perform the way they do, it's really, it's really bitter. I mean, it, it, there's a lot of bitterness. People ask me, so well, how do you explain yourself when you, when you, or how, well, how do you feel about when you watch the Dallas Cowboys and you see all these other teams around you? I said, it's, it, it's just bitterness. Because as you mentioned, you know, the thing about it, the winning, everything else comes before the winning. And I guess it's because the magnitude of the brand of what Jerry has really bestowed on everyone. And he's remarkable at that, but he hasn't been remarkable, if you're going to look at a general manager and an owner, he hasn't been remarkable about putting a winning product on the field. I mean, it's been really, really disappointing. Now, I know we've been talking about the Super Bowl, but what else do you got going on right now? Well, you know, we talk about pain and, and treatment as you get older, but uh, uh, injuries and pain. I was just talking to uh, on Saturday to Dr. Samir Syed. He's at the Pain Treatment Institute, and he treats a lot of athletes and pro players. Uh, we were discussing all the new treatments out there to keep players in the game, help them with fast recovery like regenerative therapy, stem cell treatments, PRP, and other simple injections that they have saved many athletes from needless surgery. So um, I'm just here if you uh, here to tell you guys, if you, if you or anyone uh, know has experienced any type of pain, a back, neck, knee, or shoulder, shoulder pain, then uh, go see Dr. Samira Syed at the Pain Treatment uh, Institute. They have four convenient locations in the Metroplex. Call 972-370-5771 to make an appointment. And be sure to mention the Tony Casillas Show, because, guys, I have a podcast. You can watch it on Facebook Live and subscribe to YouTube and watch my show. And he will get you back to doing what you truly enjoy, man, and that's being pain-free. Dude, thank you so much for jumping on the show. We really appreciate it, Tony. Hey, guys, as always, you guys take care and uh, go. Uh, first of all, who, who are you guys picking for the game? 
I'm Chiefs. going with former Texas Rangers son Patrick Mahomes. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I'm going with Tom. I'm going with the Bucks, man. Oh, so, we'll this should be a good game. All right, you guys, t- take care. Thanks, thanks for Tony. Me.